uh, revolutionary greetings. We are starting a, a new series where we'll be discussing the Zimbabwe Communist Party program, which was adopted at the first Congress of the party in December 2019 in Bulawayo. Most people think that a political party should just operate without a program. Uh, as communists, we are guided by the party program. A party program is a document that gets adopted after intensive discussion internally in the party. Uh, as you would know that uh, we launched the Communist Party in April 2017. But before then, we had what you called a Marxist seminar in Bulawayo on the 20th of June 2015, where we adopted a resolution to establish a Zimbabwe Communist Party, which we then launched two years later in April on the, in 2017, and then held our first conference in Bulawayo in 2019, where we adopted the party program. We obviously want you to participate in the discussion of the party program. The only way you can do so is to drop your email. We will send you the copy of the Zimbabwe Communist Party program titled Completing the Liberation of Zimbabwe, so that you will be able to participate in the discussions that you are going to hold uh, in this very channel on YouTube. On YouTube. So basically the party program, it gives a historical background uh, starting with the arrival of the white settlers in Zimbabwe, the development of capitalism and the colonialism. We've always said uh, colonialism developed alongside its twin brother, capitalism. It goes through uh, the liberation struggle uh, up to where we are today as we adopted it in 2019. So the program, uh, uh, maybe if I were to uh, uh, give you some of the subtopics uh, that are in the party program, uh, we look into communism and pan-Africanism briefly, we define that, and we have, uh, in a number of uh, literature, we have spoken about this. We look into the history and conditions of Zimbabwe. We look into the beginning of the workers' movement. What is key that, that we must note is that it is the workers in Zimbabwe that established the nationalist movement, what we now call the liberation movement. It is the workers. And in the program, we make a point that the, the liberation movement as founded by workers was later hijacked. Uh, you will see as we go on later on in 2000, when we talk about the formation of the movement for democratic change, which is now dead, uh, uh, was the workers that played a key role in the formation of the MTC when uh, they called the workers convened uh, the National Working People's Convention uh, in Chitungwiza in 1999. So the program will, uh, speaks to the beginning of the nationalist movement, the neo-colonial agenda, which we have been discussing. Uh, uh, we do a brief analysis on the neo-colonial agenda. Uh, we talk about the armed striking and uh, do an analysis on the 1980 elections and the attitude of the West. Uh, so, so it's important because the, our the liberation strike in Zimbabwe and the 1980 elections happened during the Cold War. Uh, uh, so the outcome of those elections reflect uh, 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 the era that we're in, the Cold War era. We then, of course, look into the first years of uh, what is called independence, though we prefer to call it majority rule. And then in, uh, uh, in that period, we do a brief discussion on Kukuraundi. We look, which uh, happened between 1983 and 1987. We look into the consolidation of political power by Robert Mugabe and ZANU-PF when the unit accord between ZANU-PF and PF Zapu was signed in 1987. We look, of obviously, which we cannot turn a blind eye, into the expansion of social programs in the first decade of our majority rule. We then look into the conditions because this uh, leads us or 
will, will uh, uh, lead us to understand uh, the background to the Economy Structure Adjustment Program, which was then adopted in 1991. Uh, obviously, we have to look into the land uh, question, which is of interest uh, to many comrades that we speak to, especially comrades outside Zimbabwe. And we know that in a number of uh, uh, countries like South Africa, there's a discussion on the land question. And as I've already said, that uh, we'll discuss the formation of the MTC in brief, uh, the draft constitution of 2000, and of course, the hyperinflation. And we have always said, as communists, that uh, part of the problem, or the biggest problem, with the former liberation movement is the secession question. Former liberation movements always find it difficult to deal with the succession question. Who takes over? And uh, how does one take over? And we have seen uh, 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 fights inside the liberation movement, former liberation movement. Uh, so we do an analysis. Uh, in this case, in the context of uh, ZANU-PF uh, 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 in Zimbabwe, uh, well, of course, we have characterized ZANU-PF, how, how it is formed in other uh, 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 videos on other literature that, that we have produced, but it's important to understand the succession question inside the ZANU-PF and its problems or the, the problems that it is associated with uh, so that we begin to understand the uh, polarization uh, in, in our society. Of course, we look into the international issues because the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe question became international uh, 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 when, when uh, the MTC was formed during the land uh, question or the land or chaotic land program. Uh, and, and of course, we look into, because the, the succession question, if I were to return to it, uh, uh, also, uh, or should I put it this way, that the firing of Joyce Mchuru or her removal from office when she was deputy president and the recall or removal of the current president when he was deputy president, Emerson Nangako, should be understood in the context of the failure by the former liberation movement to deal with the question of secession. And of course, we look into the uh, 2017 military coup and the post coup uh, uh, in terms of giving the historical context uh, 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 into uh, the question in, in Zimbabwe as part of completing the liberation of Zimbabwe. And of course, uh, we do not live in the past because in most cases, comrades always say, Comrade McBain and the Communist Party always gave us history lessons. It's important to understand where, where, where we come from. Uh, 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 we are to, it's, it's always said that in the past, it's important for us to understand the past because the past will guide us to the future. We should do a, a carry forward the good things that were done in the past and not repeat the mistakes that were done in the past. So uh, uh, if we do not understand where we come from, we will not be able to go forward. So therefore, we then uh, uh, give the brief context into the formation of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. But what is key is to look into the future. Uh, this future is contained in what we call a national plan for Zimbabwe. What is the national plan for Zimbabwe? Uh, we're discussing in another uh, 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 chat group, which I think you, you will uh, 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 give your views. Uh, comrades were discussing in another chat group saying Zimbabwe is not a nation, it's a country. Uh, uh, but in this program, we are saying a national plan for Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, in this national plan, uh, as, as, as we have uh, said previously, that uh, we are talking about the building of a national democratic economy. And uh, co some comrades were asking, uh, what is this national democratic economy? What do you mean by the national democratic economy? So I'll be explaining in this series as we'll be discussing uh, uh, this question. Uh, but what is key in the current context when we're discussing the future of Zimbabwe is to understand the, the currency and the banking question in Zimbabwe. Uh, we're a country that does not have its own currency. So our program, if we're looking into the future, it ought to analyze the currency and the banking question uh, in, in Zimbabwe. We obviously have to look into what we call the planning priorities. These planning priori priorities 
uh, uh, speaks to uh, electric power, liquid, look, liquid fuel, integrated energy program, water, agriculture, amongst others. Uh, and obviously we look into the way forward uh, into agriculture. We look into the technical planning, uh, agricultural workers, because as a communist party, when you talk of agriculture, it's important that you also talk about the condition of, of the worker. Uh, 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 if you are to produce, uh, workers must be uh, uh, paid what is due to them. Uh, so, so it's important uh, that, that, that we do that. We also look into the communal lands uh, uh, in Zimbabwe because uh, we are told that 70%, uh, which this one I did not verify, but it's always said that between 65 to 70% uh, uh, of Zimbabweans are in communal lands, in what we normally call rural areas. So there are challenges there which the program looks into. And uh, what is key, <coughs> as, as, as we'll be discussing, here we also recognize uh, the role of traditional leaders if we were to build a national democratic economy. Because you know in Zimbabwe we have traditional leaders that are mainly uh, uh, in communal areas. And we think as communists, uh, at this stage, in the building of national democratic economy, uh, uh, traditional leaders must play a role in their, com in their communities. We obviously look into the mining sector, uh, that is uh, 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 our minerals, the secondary industry. We look into the manufacturing industry. Uh, you will know that uh, most of the industries in Zimbabwe now are places of worship because uh, we, we are no longer manufacturing anything. We look, of course, into communication and the government. Uh, uh, that's the program of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We then conclude by looking into the class character of this program. This will be interesting. Why Zimbabwe Communist Party? Or let me say, why Communist Party? Uh, what is the class nature of the program of a Communist Party? So we, lo we, we look into that because uh, ours is informed, our program is informed by the prevailing conditions in Zimbabwe. And of course, uh, 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 we look into how this program must be implemented and expanded. So comrades, uh, 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 we want your views. Uh, please drop your email. We will certainly email you our program so that when, when we start uh, discussing it, uh, at least you'll be having a soft copy. Uh, which you will refer to. We might not cover on a YouTube channel uh, all the issues that, that we need to discuss, but it's important that uh, you have a copy of the Zimbabwe Communist Program. Otherwise, comrades, uh, uh, please like this video, subscribe, and circulate, and uh, use this video in your political uh, uh, groupings, political studies. We have said as the Zimbabwe Communist Party that uh, we must have a uh, study sales between three to five people uh, at the workplace, in our communities, wherever we are, we must have communist sales. So this will also assist you in your studies. Thank you so much, comrades. Amal.